this is a take two of two out of two video review on the Horizon. Uh, this one I have is a S3 U500 model. With this Horizon S3 U500 camera, you have shutter speed from two seconds, I mean, half a second to one five hundredth of a second. So you have half a second, quarter second, one eighth of a second, 60th of a second, 125th of a second, and 250 and 500th of a second. On the side of this um, film rewind knob is the shutter speed selector. So if you see the white dot showing, that means the faster speed becomes available. If you turn this over, that's yellow dot, then the slower speed is available that's colored in yellow. And typically, if you don't advance the film, you will not see this line up here shows the um, the selector uh, the indicator. So you have to advance the the camera over. Well, this is another way to tell you that you need advanced film too. So that's kind of a good thing. Now you see the white the white line and the dot. So the white line here is your um, shutter speed selector. You can do right now we're on yellow, so this is a half a second. Let's see what the half second looks like. That's a half second. All right, what about a quarter second? Okay, one eighth of a second. Now we go to the high, higher speed. So now this one is 1 60th, 1 1 25th, 1 2 50th, and 1 over 500 of a second. Normally when I shoot, I go something like this. So my finger is not in the shot. So it seems to me, right? is that on the slow speed, the, the speed matters. The, what should I say? The different shutter speed uh, resulting in the speed of the drum rotate different rate. Whereas on the faster speed, it feels like at least I, you know, by the sound doesn't know that I don't notice the difference. So it seems like instead of changing the speed of the drum rotating, it just changing the, the width where, you know, just like how, you know, normal SLR 35 millimeter with, uh, you know, uh, focal plane shutter works, you know, at some point it's, I think they always going to be the sync speed and the difference is how much that slot slit that come across the film, you know, the narrower slit, the faster the speed, right? So I think it's very similarly to with a horizon camera. So, so that on higher speed, if you know, in other words, if 1 60th of a second shutter speed works, then you can almost, you know, with a little bit educated guess that 1 over 1 25th or 1 over 2 50th will work as well. I'm not too sure about 1 over 500 because most of these horizon cameras, um, the highest shutter speed is 1 over 2 50th. So, this particular model has one over 500. Um, I'm venture to guess, maybe this, the drum go a little faster maybe, or they have a way to actually make that blinder a little bit, you know, the, uh, the, the, the slot a little bit narrower to give you that one over 500 of a second. So it's very interesting. It's definitely a very interesting camera. Um, Overall experience on this camera has been good. I, I was able to get um, sharp images. Uh, doesn't have the banding. I was gonna talk, I'll tell you a little bit more about the banding. The 28 millimeter lens, it's uh, relatively sharp. It's pretty sharp. So I, I, I really enjoy it. Uh, the bad thing about this camera is it's a little flimsy. You can see, you can feel the, the plastic that squeaking um, and 
the on my copy the level the bubble level is being useful but it's I think they use oil or something in the for the bubble level so the bubble moves quite slowly and sometimes stack like a kind of a stick to the edge and I have to kind of tell the camera down a little bit just to reset it and and try to see if I can get a you know the bubble to move to the middle um, banding a lot of swing lens camera have this issue not just the, this Russian camera um, no blacks white lux those are the camera I have experience with uh, white lux I had two uh, white lux models before I my first white, uh, swing lens camera is a white lux f6 it was kind of a beater with a, some dents on the top but that camera did not produce any binding. Later, I sold that F6 and bought a, a black uh, White Lux F8. You know, like everybody wants the F8, right? That's the last model. That one had binding. So, and then I also had issues uh, last year with my Noblux. I have a 35 millimeter Noblux. That one, you would think that didn't ha it won't have binding because A, it's battery operated. B, the, the drum rotates a whole, um, I think about 360 before it start exposing the film just to build the momentum for the drum to, to turn. Um, you were thinking that camera have least amount of banding, if any, because it's battery operated. But it, the image, uh, the film I got out of that camera, I've seen some banding. So I don't know. I haven't looked into it yet. This camera, I have not noticed any binding. Okay, so which is a good news. Maybe I just got lucky. I don't know. On this camera, um, the back is very flimsy. You see. So in order for me to uh, reduce the amount of flimsiness, I put a piece of tape on this. This is where the hinge is at. So it's a little less, but you can still, I can still hear it. I don't know if you can hear it. When these camera were designed, the designer have a problem, right? Because you can't really focus the camera because, you know, it's how you're gonna focus on something like a mounted on a drum and rotates. So they have to, decide where do most people gonna use this camera uh, what's the you know the distance focal distance people are use it for on the white lux I believe is three meters so at three meter which is about nine feet away to infinity even the camera is wide open with the lens wide open uh, you can get a sharp image whereas no blocks the lens is set on infinity now with some model you have a noble x model i think you have a couple maybe two or three uh, distance you can adjust so it's not always stuck on the infinity but if you buy the cheaper more economical noble x model it's focused on infinity so in order for you to shoot something like a close range you have to stop down the lens a lot which is kind of sucks if you want to use the swing lens camera for street. Uh, so this camera, I was told, is also focused on the infinity. So that means, oh gosh, if I want to shoot somebody like maybe four or five feet away, I have to use maybe, a, uh, I don't know, aperture at like F8 or F16 or something really small. The problem with that is what if you also want to fire faster speed? And you also have to use a faster speed film. Um, it's 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 not good, right? And so I modified it uh, based on some people on the internet's recommendation. As you can see, so so the the goal to move the focal plane back and make it closer is to move the film away from the drum, just by a little bit. You don't need to buy a lot. And I have found what works for me is using gaffer tape. You can see on the film reel, the top and bottom, the tape. That's the, what I installed, the gaffer tape. And I feel like 
the gaffer tape's thickness is it's just enough, so allow you to shoot with the lens wide open and with your subject about you know, I say four or five feet away. So it's it's you know, it's pretty. But of course, I'm losing infinity. So if I want to use this camera for infinity, I have to remove the gaffer tape. But I will say 99.99% of the chance I'm gonna shoot this camera, uh, you know, street style with something happening between five, well, between probably between four to 10 feet. So this, this, I think this modification works the best for me. The thing with the gaffer tape is they're very easy to apply because they're not very super tacky at first, but if you press onto a something, it will actually stick. Um, I had a lot of uh, uh, trial and error on the gaffer tape because if you don't put, uh, it's hard to use. Okay, here we go. So these right here, the gaffer tape. If you don't have this tape go all the way, make it a little longer basically. If you just put it right here, right? When the film going through it, all it takes is what the film catch the edge, the further edge or the side edge of the gaffer tape, the film will start rolling this tape. It'll just roll and then it will all jammed up here. And at that point, you can't shoot anymore. You had to take this camera into a dark room and open it back and try to peel the gaffer tape off the film. So what I did is I made the gaffer tape longer so that you can see it goes all the way here. That means when film transporting through on this gaffer tape, it doesn't catch this very beginning of the gaffer tape. Similarly, um, I made it longer, so went under the roller and to the back side. I didn't do this side. Since for some reason, I always seem to have problem with the gaffer, the tape on the top of the camera than the bottom. Anyway, so the top of the camera, the gaffer tape actually went all the way under this roller. That way, the film would never uh, catch the beginning of these tape. Some people suggest using you know, those um, Dymo tape, the one that, you know, back in the day people used to press on letters, you know, those embossed letters, those tape, plastic, but width-wise about um, quarter inch-ish. Those um, will work. They're a little bit thinner than this. Remember, we are trying to keep the film at a certain distance away from the drum. I use my caliper and measure the thickness of a, a gaffer tape. It works better for what I need because you know just for shooting um, close, you know, closer action. And that's what I did. The other thing I did with this camera is I heard with these camera that the plastic so shiny, it will um, cause internal reflection. So I went on Amazon, I bought the, they call it the blackest black or something, flat black. Uh, it comes, it came in a um, hobby paint jar size. I kind of just hand painted inside of, basically flocked inside. Um, I have not, well, I did this right after I bought the camera. So I don't know if I'm gonna have an internal reflection or not, because I did this before I run a, uh, a roll of film through it. So. That's another modification you can do. Um, that's pretty much it. The camera is pretty simple to use. As you can see, this is your film speed selector. If you see the white dot, that means all the white faster speed is available. If you turn this to yellow dot here, all the yellow slower speed will becomes available. Pretty self-explanatory, but normally, I'll stick with the faster because I'm I'm using a handheld, you know. Uh, the thing with um, swing lens camera is you're not gonna get the same look with a swing lens camera as a like X Pan or Mamiya Seven with a film attachment or a uh, large format with a six by 12 back or a six by 17 camera, because those doesn't have a swing lens. So your 
focal, focal, focal plane is flat, whereas this, the focal plane is curved. So it gives you a little bit different look. Of course, um, with the swing lens like this, your field of view is almost like 180 degrees and it doesn't distort your verticals. Vertical lines still remain straight. Whereas with a, a lens, um, simply you crop it in, it's, you're gonna distort on you know, both vertical and horizontal. So I think this is a unique camera. Definitely anyone should try it. And the other thing is it, the fact it doesn't look like a camera and if you want to shoot street, you're going to get a scene with people more natural because, you know, your coverage is so wide, but people don't know that. So you can get a pretty good look with it. I certainly recommend it with a Horizon. If you can get, get a good copy, it's so far the, the least expensive option. Um, yeah, it's even cheaper than the price of a 35 millimeter adapter for the Mamiya 7. Think about that. The adapter just really just holding your, you know, a, a take up spool and a, a crank and another spool holding your 35 millimeter canister will cost you $500. Where this camera, I think I bought this for maybe 200. Yeah, probably close to 200. So it's uh, pretty economical. And if you use it properly, you can get a very cool image with it. So I highly recommend this camera for at least for a starter or some, you know, cheap enough to have it just so you have an option to shoot something unique and different, especially when you're on a, um, a trip going somewhere and you want to, you know, get some, you know, cover a lot of uh, environment, for example, it, it, it's, it's really, really cool. And then uh, what I normally do with the film is once I got film, process I generally shoot with this camera I like to use black and white film and I shoot at, at four uh, two eight is I think it's a two eight yes I don't use two eight as much as often at four um, and then I'll scan it in I normally don't use a darkroom print my own photos nowadays but it's pretty cool to print it too um, it's uh, the size of the negative, it's kind of equivalent to, I would say, like an X pan or uh, maybe somewhere around six by seventeen. Don't call me on it, okay? The what the the negative is roughly about two frame width, if that makes any sense. Two thirty five millimeter full frame width. Anyways, well, thanks for watching. So you hope you guys have a good day and feel free to comment below if you have any questions on this camera. It's certainly a unique camera. It's definitely, I wouldn't call it one trick pony, but it does one trick and does it really well. So it's just up to the, you, know, you as a photographer to how to use it creatively.